Welcome to this BBTV spotcast coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. When you see the, the website of my guest of today, you cannot help but see and feel that he exudes experience and skill around the vital subject of leadership. This is number one in a trilogy of BVTV spotcasts he's kindly agreed to record with me. So let's go to Palm Springs and come. I'm from Caliente Leadership. Meet Stephen Howard. Hello, Stephen. Good morning, Malcolm. Good to talk with you again. Yeah, well, morning is near the end of the day for us. I mean, <laughs> not we, for me. <laughs> we've done our day. We've done our day, days, days work. <laughs> now, I, I, I hear from our conversation we're just having beforehand uh, that you are gradually shifting your your base away from Palm Springs to Mexico. Is that correct? Si, señor. <laughs> si, señor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, that's about as fluent as I as I will get. <laughs> Although I can say tacos, you know. All right, <laughs> Stephen. Let's get started on your trilogy of BVT podcasts with a to the point question: How has leadership changed in the last eighteen months, and where do today does today's leaders need to see and acknowledge that change? Well, that's a that's a twenty hour question, Malcolm. But I'll <laughs> I'll keep it as short as I can. It, how's it changed? It's it's like change on its head. Um, control leaders have lost control completely. I mean, working from home, you can't control employees and staff are working from home, so leaders have to forget about control. Uh, a whole bunch of new skills, uh, which we used to call soft skills, but I'm now calling either essential skills or even power skills, things like empathy, things like resiliency, well-being, um, adaptability. These are the skills that are going to propel leaders themselves and their organizations into the future. And, and they have to. Yeah. It, they're not so much soft skills, as you quite rightly say. They were soft in the past, but now they're the sharp end of life, aren't they? They are. And, and if you think about it, they, they're highly multifaceted, each one of these skills. They take years to inculcate and to learn how to apply. And they're actually, they're continually evolving in how we implement them as well. So there's nothing soft about them. It's, uh, as you say, it's the pointing end of the pencil. It's what, yeah. we, it's what leaders have to do. Um, partly also, as, as you're well aware, the great resignation of 2021 uh, here in the United States in April, May, and June. 11 and a half million people resigned their jobs wow. in three months uh, that you can't keep staff. And so you can't keep staff the old way you're leading. So you're going to have to change the way you lead to keep staff. So is that a, a vulnerability that, that leaders now need to understand that they've got within the business? Uh, in the past, they have it, had it, maybe have had it so easy you know, that talent would stay. And now it seems to be moving on. Is that correct? It is. And partly is, you know, people working from home. I'm, I've talked to so many people who said, I don't, you know, I'm so glad I don't have the one hour commute each way. I now, you know, when I finish my work day at five o'clock or five thirty or six, I can spend time with my children before mm -hmm. I used to get home at seven thirty. I might be able to read my kids a, a story, put them to bed. And that was my quality time, you know, 15 minutes reading them to, and putting them to sleep. And now I get more time with my kids. Uh, so I'm hearing that more and more from people and, and people are saying, I'm, I, this is what I want to do. And if my company won't let me work from home, at least most of the time or part of the time, then I'm going to look somewhere else. Yeah. Life is too short. Life is too short to work 60 hour weeks. Well, I, I think that's true. And, and I guess also the, uh, you know, we're in a, a five generations uh, situation at the moment, aren't we? we and are. I guess that the younger generation come through millennials and so on there, um, shoving out us older baby boom as well. I am, you know, <laughs> the difference there. The, the, but how do these to leaders get these new skills? I mean, how do you help them at Caliente uh, Leadership? Because, you know, it's not something that you can say, here's a, here's a book or follow this course or something. There's, it's something internal, isn't it? It is, although there will be a book uh, early next year when I write it. But right. before, until then, it, right now, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching or even uh, groups of coaching. I'm dealing you know, with one organization. I've got four of their um, leaders that I'm coaching simultaneously. And we're just taking them right through. What does resilience mean? How do you, mm. how do you behave resiliency? How do you show up resilient in the workplace? Uh, and you know, part of that is, quite frankly, look, we all have bad days. Uh, but if I show up 
upset, angry, tired, whatever, it's going to cascade to my team members, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And so it's just showing them some best practice, some tips, some techniques, how to control your stress. Stress management is going to be a huge thing in the future. Mm -hmm. I, I am, a, you know, yes, we can bring people back to the workplace, but we also have to help people heal. And that's going to be part of our jobs as leaders is helping people heal. So I'm teaching them resiliency, empathy, emotional intelligence, so just in one-to-one -one phone conversations, Zoom calls in 50 minutes. And, you know, we do it once a week. Uh, and that's the only way to pick it up right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you entirely on uh, on the need for things like emotional intelligence and everything. The, the only thing I, I, I want to sort of throw into the pot there, Stephen, is in the past, what we've just been talking about would have been regarded as a weakness and everybody would hide that, particularly uh, if you've got anxiety or any mental challenges. Uh, are you now saying that people are starting to acknowledge that they've got a, a personal challenge or a personal weakness. They do. It's a it's a gap, and 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 it's because if you position it as a skill, before if you position it, kind of a, it's an emotional gap, or mm -hmm. it's part of your your personality character. But no, as you said before, it's it's nothing soft about it now. Um, and to do this, the um, it's no longer nice to have. It's mandatory. And I think once people are realizing that, you know, before it was like, okay, I've learned my technical skills. I've learned how to be an accountant. I've learned how to code software or run an IT department or whatever it is. I can't lead people without mm -hmm. understanding that emotional intelligence, that empathy, tenacity. Tenacity is yeah. another one yeah. uh, that I spent a lot of time with people. How do you, how do you exhibit tenacity? Um, in a way that's positive, um, passionate. Um, and that's part of what our, our coaching services are all about now is helping yeah. people become tenacious. tenacious. Let, let me just try and squeeze in a, a, one last little question before we finish sure. this episode. And that's that um, I find that today's leaders that I'm been talking to, and as you know, we've interviewed hundreds, uh, say over 600 in the last uh, 18 months there, that, that they're finding it really, really hard as to who they can trust, because they've never had to actually trust somebody beforehand. Now, yes, they've had somebody coaching or mentoring, or it may be, but the word trust is the one that I, that I found has surfaced so much. What's your feelings on that? Trust is the foundation of leadership. And if you as a leader don't exhibit trust in your people, then they won't trust you. And to gain that trust, you have to you live up to your word, be open, be transparent. And I think one thing is coming out of this is it's okay to say, I don't know. If you say to people, I don't know, let's figure this out together. That actually builds trust in the past. Again, as you talked about before, people would have seen that as being a weakness. How can I be a leader of a team if I don't have all the answers? Well, you can have all the answers. So yeah. say, look, I don't know. Let's work on this together. Uh, but be upfront with people. That will build trust. And then you have to trust people. The more you trust people, the more they will reward you. Brilliant. Thanks, Stephen. Now, let me remind, me remind our audience of your website URL, which is, uh, viewers, obviously, you can see it on the screen behind me, but for listeners, let me read it out. It's all the W's, all the W's, and the word, first word is caliente. It's caliente readership. And let me just spell that out for you. Uh, C-A-L-I-E-N-E. Calienteleadership.com. Go to calienteleadership.com. Go there and get details of all Steve, Stephen can help you with on leadership, including virtual coaching, who's just been chatting about, and details of his book, Eight Keys to Becoming a Great Leader. Well, we call this podcast uh, and, and our main channel, BVTV, Today's Leader, because leaders are facing issues that they more than likely have never encountered and never had the skills or training to manage. Stephen Howard has the answers. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, Malcolm.